everybody, I am Net Nursing Puff and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're talking all about the Jackson. So what's it for? Who uses it? What are the side effects? What does the nurse need to know? What's important patient education? All of that stuff. So let's get into it. So the first thing we need to know is what does it do, right? So it helps make the heartbeat stronger and with a more regular rhythm. It does this by making calcium more available for contractile proteins, which will result in an increase of our cardiac output, increase of the force of the contraction, decrease in the heart rate, and decrease in the AV conduction speed. So all of that is the heart is going to work better and pump more blood to the body. So that's what it does, okay? It causes the heart to work better, more efficiently, and to pump more blood to the body. So now let's talk about what type of patient would be on digoxin and what are some side effects to look out for. Now let's talk about some of the uses of this medication. So this is commonly given to patients who are in heart failure, cardiogenic shock, AFib, a flutter, or atrial tachycardia. And you'll note a theme with these, something that these have in common. In all of these diseases, the heart is pumping and emptying inefficiently, okay? So it's not working as good as it should. And what's digoxin's job? It's to make it more efficient. So that's why all of these would get this medication. When it comes to side effects, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, those would be the most common, most typical side effects. That's why I put the little star next to them. The rest of these aren't as common and actually some of them are signs of toxicity. So fast or slow or uneven heart rate, and that one makes a little bit of sense, right? Because that's kind of what this medication does. It slows your heart rate, it messes with your heart rate so it can change it. It can cause dizziness, especially if you get too low, if you get too bradycardic confusion or overall weakness, hallucinations, blurry vision, or a headache. So these are the uses and the side effects for digoxin. Now let's talk about the nurse's role. Now let's talk about nursing care. So the first thing is the nurse needs to assess the apical pulse for one full minute before giving. And this is every time you give it, not just the first time, but every time you administer this medication, you want to make sure you assess the pulse for one full minute. Because remember, this can lower your pulse, okay? It can decrease your heart rate. So if the patient already has a low pulse, if they're already bradycardic, you might want to hold this medication. So very important. We're going to monitor the electrolytes and renal function studies. Monitor the DIG levels. So normal therapeutic range is 0.5 to 2. So anything higher than this is considered toxic. And anything lower than this just really isn't very effective. They're going to be on strict I and O. We're going to weigh them daily. We're going to assess their lung sounds, check for edema, and assess their cardiac status. Because obviously this is going to affect the heart. And then the final thing the nurse has to do is lots and lots of patient education. And actually, it is quite a bit of patient education, so I wanted to talk specifically about that. Now let's talk about patient education. So some things we need to teach our patients. Of course, the signs and symptoms of toxicity, what to look out for. We want to encourage them to keep their appointments because they are going to have routine appointments to get their DIG levels done, the renal function studies done, so we want to make sure that they're attending those appointments. We want to encourage a diet rich in potassium and low in sodium. We need to teach them how to take their pulse, so how to check your heart rate before you would give yourself the med. So just like us as the nurse, we need to take the apical pulse for a full minute before we would administer. We need to teach the patient how to check their own heart rate before they would take it at home. We need to let them know that they have to inform the doctor about all medications and supplements. 
Unfortunately, this medication has a lot of interactions with herbal supplements and over-the-counter meds, even like cough medicine. So really important that the patient lets us know what over-the-counter meds, prescription meds, or supplements, vitamins, all of that. We need to know all of that information to make sure that there's no interactions. We want to encourage them to take it at the same time every single day and to never abruptly stop it. So if they're going to be stopping the medication, they're going to be doing so under the direction of the physician. They're not just going to say, you know what, I'm done. I don't want to take it anymore. Okay? Because that, of course, could have dangerous side effects on their heart. We want to encourage them to wear an emergency ID, so maybe like an emergency tag or a bracelet, just letting people know that they're on this medication. And then to call the doctor's office if they're showing any signs of toxicity. So I feel like I've been hinting about this the whole video, but we need to talk about toxicity, okay? This is very, very important. So I'm going to talk about the signs and symptoms, who's at risk, and is there an antidote? Is there something we can do about it? So signs and symptoms. The first signs and symptoms are normally like GI symptoms, like nausea, vomiting, anorexia, which is loss of appetite, and diarrhea. As it gets more serious, we have headaches, confusion, potentially hallucinations. They can report vision changes such as blurry vision or like seeing halos around like lights and lamps, you know, bright things. And then even heart palpitations. So these are the signs and symptoms they need to look out for and they would need to report to the doctor right away. Who's at risk? Technically, anybody taking this medication would be at risk, right? But certain groups of people are more at risk. That includes people who have low amounts of potassium, which is why we encourage them to have a diet rich in potassium. High amounts of calcium or low amounts of magnesium. Those who are also taking calcium channel blockers at the same time. And the elderly. And is there anything we can do about it? Yes, there is. Thank goodness, right? We do have an antidote, and that is digoxin immune fab. And this is probably, out of all of the medications and antidotes you're going to have to learn in nursing school, the easiest one to remember because it has the name right in it, okay? So if there is an antidote, we can give that if their levels get too high. The big thing here is to prevent this from happening in the first place, and that requires good patient education. So letting them know what the signs and symptoms of toxicity are, what to report, not to mix you know, other medications and supplements, and to keep those appointments to get their DIG levels taken. That's the key. So this is toxicity, and this whole thing has been to Jackson. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.